Okay. Um, the, the topic we're going to tackle today is uh, augmented responsibility, with the, which is a, a new concept. And we will go through this uh, uh, reflection on talking about art uh, as well as other concepts. Uh, but first, a very quick presentation. Um, the ground, the theoretical ground, can you hear me even without the microphone? Can you hear me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> okay, the theoretical ground of our reflection is based on digital sociology, which is a very young uh, branch of sociology, uh, still in definition. And my, uh, uh, my approach to digital sociology is made up of the interse intersections of three areas. Marketing, uh, because of my experience in Procter & Gamble, and then uh, uh, academic experience in human sciences, in sociology in uh, particular, and digital experience in, uh, uh, by playing the role of a, a scientific director of an English uh, company working on CEO, web analytics, web consultancy. So digital sociology stems out of these three areas. Now, the issues we are going to tackle are this, quite big issues. The first is, is technology providing us with more choice and freedom? And second question, are we more responsible individuals? Well, is it just an illusion? And at the end of it, if so, who is going to take our responsibility? Now, first, uh, let's start from the big picture and uh, we, um, before starting, uh, just mention uh, our roadmap. We will start about the com we're tackling the concept of complexity, of connectivity, of unpredictability. Then we will move to the concept of multidimensionality uh, that will help us to explain the concept, the new concept of augmented individual and augmented responsibility. We will ask ourselves, is it true or is it an illusion? Well, if we examine the distances be between human uh, and technology, we will see how technology is more competent than humans. And actually, we'll see that this is an illusion. But it will open us the doors to a new opportunity for organizations that is digital corporate social responsibility. So big picture, complexity. We have seen how the rational choice theory appeared to be unable to explain via its linear approach the complexity of the web. Uh, in fact, the web is a complex system, ecosystem, composed by uh, different subsystems, a really high number of subsystems of uh, digital and physical um, pattern. The issue for a complex system is to connect two points, the effect to its cause. That's why we can't talk about linearity, but we can talk about multidimensionality. Many fields of science, as uh, physics, biology, information theories, uh, have a specific approach to the understanding of uh, ecosystems. If probably you know uh, Malcolm Gladwell, the author of The Tipping Point, he talked about, uh, he used uh, uh, a science, uh, uh, which is epidemiology, to explain how connectivity works in terms of space and time. Virality helps us in understanding how contagion happens inside the web and how speed is the engine behind many, many viral uh, issues for organizations, issues in terms of reputation. And then uh, the third law of virality is a law tied to chaos theory, that is, little changes have big effects. Based on these three concepts, we 
may say that a not linear multidimensional pattern governs change. So we are in a different uh, uh, conceptual frame in comparison to modern age. Well, this generates a whole different approach to reality. We know that uh, we connect dots constantly in our daily life. Uh, we connect dots between social media and information coming from search engines and people. We connect each other via connecting dots, not linear patterns. And this changes deeply the way we think, the way we relate one to the other in a physical and in a virtual sphere, in a physical, physical to physical sphere, and then virtual to virtual spheres. So it changes the way we work. But at the same time, it changes also the way we make business. Think about the evolution of business models from the traditional 2080 curve, normal uh, curve, and the long tail where sales relates to products in a whole different way. So all these changes let us understand that something really disruptive is happening in our ecosystem and in our lives. We're shifting from a monodimensional pattern to a multidimensional pattern. And I would propose you a very powerful and synthetic tool, which is art. If we examine two pictures in two different periods, the first is this, you know, the author, which is, who's the author of this? Caravaggio, right? We are in the 17th century. And if we make a comparison on a same subject, this is a basket of fruit. And if we take Brack's fruit plate, which is substantially the same subject, we see an enormous number of differences. On this side, Caravaggio, we can see that reality is um, made in a very, is um, interpreted in a very, very specific, meticulous and exact way. It is an objective representation of reality. Objective because any of us see the same thing, which is a basket of fruit with the same boundaries, with the same components and anything. It is not only object. We would say that this is a monodimensional reproduction of reality. It's there, it's static, it doesn't change. It's uh, three dimensions. Instead, if we move to the other picture, we find a really different world. It is dynamic, it is not static. We see many different planes intersecting one to the other, so it's multidimensional. We see that it's not ob objective at all, because I'm sure that in this moment, all of you staring at this picture, are, are seeing something different. So it's subjective. So we are, in, we are in, in a whole different approach. And this approach synthesizes what is happening in our reality, in our internet age. That is uh, an exponentially extremization of Brack's picture. So moving from reality, moving from objective reproduction of reality, uh, moving from a static picture, from a monodimensional picture to a complex picture of reality, a subjective picture, a dynamic, a multiple interpretation of reality. Well, what is the key learning? We live in a multidimensional, complex, and unpredictable connected digital ecosystem. We can draw this key learning because what happened to the shift from the Caravaggio age to the Brax age 
is happening in almost all spheres of human action. In the question and answer section, we might uh, go deeper on this, but it explains how we are really moving from one pattern to the other. And this helps us in understanding how multidimensionality affects the relationship between human choice and responsibility in the internet age. Let's see how. To understand this, we use, we adopt a theory which is the situational context theory. We might talk about this during the question and answer uh, session. It, according to this theory, physical distances between technology and human beings help in making meanings exchanging one to the other. And this is made up of, this is based on an interaction, interactive process inside an environment. And this is the, actually the context, which is, uh, according to a theory, a situation giving meanings to things. So think about the context as the environment in which these meanings happen. But there is technology between us and the environment. In fact, technology acts in devices, any kind of devices act as a frame, as a filter between situational context and humans. And this interface help us draw from the reality from our environment, many, many possibilities to choose, many choice sets. And these choice sets are determined by the power of digital media and of channels that empower us in terms of getting information, in terms of acting. This concept is behind the new concept of augmented individual which is an individual, an individual empowered by technology with um, a definition of a hyper self, empowered by information, and in, in turn uh, ca characterized by an individuality which is uh, enriched by a high level of responsibility. We are much, much, much more responsible because we are more free and because we may choose among a, a huge set of choices. So, the issue is where? Is that devices are reducing more and more distances between uh, the environment and human. In fact, if we analyze the distance gaps between uh, devices and human, we may understand how distance, according to the context theory, allows a deeper participation to situational contexts. If you think about a desktop, desktop and if you compare the physical distance of a desktop to a wearable, for example, or a mobile, which we constantly have in our hands. According to mobility, according to human technology physical distance, according to human technology interaction with uh, uh, complex systems, then we, and situation context, we may understand how the shrinking of distances, of physical distances between devices and humans allow technology to interact in a deeper way with the environment in comparison to human. We will see how technologies are becoming more competent than human, humans in understanding uh, and in uh, provide an interpretation of an environment. So, this uh, chart uh, is based on distance frequency parameters, which has, as we have uh, seen, our mobility, that is how a device is mobile. 
with the human, okay? So how it participates to our different situations in different locations. And the second one is the physical distance we talked about. And the third is the ability to interact with situation contexts. There are many, many examples to uh, give, provide us with a confirmation of this. We just stop in one of these, in one or two examples, um, then in, right after the speech we might discuss about this and provide you with more examples. But if we think about the first um, company, Sephora, and if we talk, uh, if we uh, think about the in-store online merging, we, we know that Sephora uh, encourages clients to use their mobile to get more information from the web when they are in store. Information on the web, not just Sephora app. And this is a, an example of how a device, a technological device as a mobile, allows to it allows individuals to have more choices, more information. And then they choose, and they are responsible for this choice. Or, for example, the second one, Gucci, uses wish lists. The wish list compilation starts at home with your mobile or PC uh, or tablet and ends up inside the store where you can use also augmented reality, where you can use QR codes, you can use interaction with devices to get more information and to build up your choice set, which is definitely rich. Richer than a situation in which you wouldn't have any technology. You wouldn't have any wish list anyway. So there are many examples to understand how technology interacts with the environment and provides you with more uh, responsibility and choices. So, where are we? Considering our roadmap, we are there. We're asking ourselves whether this augmented individual, this augmented reality is true or is it an illusion? To understand this, we uh, ask some questions to <laughs> the philosopher Aristoteles. And we find out that the answers are quite interesting because Aristoteles was the first philosopher to use the word tech. Techne corresponds to technology, but uh, it, it corresponds to the know-how and the knowledge. So it corresponded to uh, Praxis and techne. At the same time, old Romans synthesized these two concepts in one word, art. The, with the increasing uh, introduction and pervasive introduction of uh, uh, technology, however, these two concepts have split. And we saw first technology taking over know-how. What it means. When you have a, a car broken, are you able to fix it? No. You call for assistance. Do you know how a TV is exactly works? Do you know how a toaster works? We don't know anything. Technology knows it. And on the other side, talking about knowledge, if you think about how technology is competent in providing you with information, well, Technology is more competent than us in comparison with going on libraries and looking at books and getting information via that channel. Well, we understand how praxis, that is know-how, and techne, which is knowledge, are synthesized and conquered by technology. Know-how is just uh, uh, taken over by technology via Internet of Things, machine to machine, dialoguing, by near field communication, think about the interaction with the environment of technology, by, uh, via virtual reality, and via artificial intelligence, which is giving more and more autonomy to technology in terms of making choices. But at the same time, technology owns information via search engines. 
web analytics apps work to synthesize knowledge for us and platforms. So the end of this reflection, which is not an end, it's just the beginning, is to find a positive side out of this illusion. It's the opportunity that organizations which are behind technology have to use technology in a, a positive ways, in, a, uh, in ways in which technology, technology gives humans positive opportunities. You know the project Aquila? You know it? Facebook? It's a project um, that, um, uh, according to which a drone uh, will fly and will stay on uh, underdeveloped countries' regions where there is no internet connection. And as the researchers have found out that every, um, I actually don't remember if there's six or ten uh, connected new persons, there is one lifted from deep poverty. So this is a very positive uh, corporate social responsibility action. But think about Internet of Things applied to health. Think about uh, uh, digital uh, alphabet alphabetization uh, uh, on underdeveloped countries. So this is the opportunity we have out of this um, understanding of a situation in which we uh, are eluded to be so much more free, freedom, uh, we have more freedom, we are more responsible. Okay, that's the end of it. Uh, questions? Hello. Okay. Yeah. Which seem to have slid from one to another. You asserted that things, if they were multidimensional, were somehow subjective. And I think of a geodesic dome as multidimensional, but I don't think of it as subjective. You said things are objective if they're only um, one dimensional. And you used just a painting to address this. And I'm not sure how this works out. And then you said things like, I'm an augmented individual if um, I'm empowered by technology. So if I learn to ride a bicycle, I am empowered by technology, but there's certain, certainly nothing digital in that. So uh, I guess I don't know what you mean by an augmented individual if you simply define it as empowered by technology. Yes, um, you made an example. If I ride a bicycle, I have a technology, and I'm not subjective, right? Well, actually, uh, we are talking about how technology is moving, how technology is evolving, and how physical distances between digital technology, not any kind of technology, uh, allows and empower subjects to have more information and to have more choices. So um, we are definitely more um, empowered subjects due to... That's my, my problem is you've used words like physical distance. And if you notice in my hands, I have a Galaxy tablet and I have a piece of paper. And my notes for your talk have been taken on a piece of paper which at this moment is about three inches from my face, where yeah. the tablet is about five inches from my face. The physical distance of this object and this object doesn't seem to have anything to do. I, I don't understand. You use the word physical distance, but then you talk about knowledge. And knowledge is not a, a physical thing you hit, right? 
Okay. That you're using this word distance, and I don't understand how yeah, it fits. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, try to open your block note and tell me what you find. I find that someone has given a call. Go through the pages. Go through the pages. I'm yeah. going to the page, the first page, the nearest thing to me. Is there okay, a, okay. And it tells me that someone has given a talk. Okay. And it tells me that they've tried to define an augmented individual in terms of being helped by technology. And I okay. haven't found what's new yet. Now open your iPad, your tablet. This doesn't tell me anything about what you've said. And have a connection. Hmm? <laughs> But and the then physical distance digit. of this object to my hand has nothing to do with. And then digit. The, the point is, is that we are not talking just about physical distance. We are talking about physical distance with a technology able to empower and to access. So the key word is accessing information. Then don't which say is not a bicycle. Physical distance. Which is not a just a paper, a piece of paper. This is the heart of the Internet Age revolution. It's not just about a physical distance with a bicycle. No, we are in a whole different revolutionary, revolutionary world. It's the world of access to information. So this is the key word which, uh, coupled with physical distance, allows you to try to understand. I understand. That Some of us have more precision something. in our words to need it for understanding, so I apologize. This might have very interesting lunchtime stuff for you. Yeah, we will, <laughs> with pleasure. Yes. Thank you. So, thank you very much. One, one, one remark on Caravaggio. I don't think that any art historian would subscribe to what you said about it. It is not at all uh, a representation of objective reality or an objective presentation of anything. So that you, you might get the illusion if you look at that, at that fruit bowl, but just look at the, at the picture Judith and Holofernes, and you, you will not propose that in the studio of Caravaggio, a woman was beheading a man. It is, it is an, an illusionary scene, and you, you, you mix up, say, media technology with ontology on that place. It is no, by no means any uh, objective representation. It is no, not even a representation of anything. Yes, we, uh, we all know that Caravaggio went through very different phases, as many painters. But how many planes intersecting one to the other you find in Caravaggio, Giudizio, and Oloferne? How many how many planes intersecting one to the other as you find in Cubist painter? Uh, you find in Caravaggio. Read up, read up the, the, the scholarly works by art historians and you will find that what see, seems to be simple in the first place is ex extraordinarily complex, at least as complex as with Brack or the Cubists. It is not true that this is just a blunt representation of anything. It is not. Uh, do you think that cubist, cubism is something uh, uh, that is assimilable to, uh, to the, the paintings of the 17th century? Yes, in a way, because Caravaggio <laughs> constructed, constructed very much with, with, uh, with technology, with central perspective and everything, with no, very much knowledge about lighting and everything. It's a highly technological painting that you get there. It is you no know, blunt. It is no photography. Uh, and even photography is technological. It is a highly constructed, super rational, uh, super aware, right. high-tech product. Right, and, in and, fact. And not, a, not a depiction of any reality. Judith did not behead Holofernes in the way that Caravaggio showed us. Well, uh, in, in the early 19th, uh, in 19... Uh, uh, 30, about 30, or, or 20. Um, Picasso was walking along Boulevard Raspel with Gertrude Stein and so mimetic tanks going by. And he said, yes, that is the change. That is my picture. And it was a moment of turnaround. It was 1918, I guess. 
it was a moment of turn of a historical turnaround, but also social turnaround. Nothing, nothing came back as it was. And Cubism represents uh, a turnaround view of the world. But I guess this is another lunch discussion, isn't it? <laughs> I have a question uh, about your framework. How does your situational context theory help you to deal with technological determinism? And the second one is, who develops, designs digital technologies? Since you were talking about technology like it was autonomous without people designing technology. Um, the situational uh, context theory mm, is, um, is a theory which gathers, is a very interdisciplinary theory, which gathers uh, uh, scientists from information theory, uh, computer science, cognitive science, also philosophy uh, and mathematics. And the theory is based on an effort to understand how uh, uh, the environment um, might provide information and uh, uh, it is based on uh, context, situation context, which are the basis on which uh, uh, mathematicians uh, under an analytical uh, perspective analyze how semantic uh, is produced by the, relation, uh, the relationship between information and uh, and uh, actors. So um, this uh, this is a very, I mean, the basics of the uh, theory is uh, is grounded is scientifically uh, has a, has a history under the scientific point of view. But the interpretation of the uh, science is uh, quite uh, is quite new. And anything which is interdisciplinary. Uh, in our scientific world, uh, has I mean, strives to be uh, to be uh, to be accepted, but uh, it's the only uh, way to have an understanding of a complex reality as we have. What about how it deals with technology determinism? I ask how it deals with technological determinism. Uh, it's the it's the same um, relationship you have with uh, uh, web analytics uh, used to uh, to draw data from uh, human experience and human behaviors. You have a technological determinism in using uh, web analytics, but at the same time you have an interpretation of reality, which is an interpretation of humans. I don't know if I have answers. You're welcome. Thank you, Dr. I think it's very, very interesting. It's a very charming.